You want some more? I'm full. Mm, I couldn't. Well, maybe just a smidge. <laughs> How can a girl look like Audrey Hepburn and eat like Jackie Gleason? <laughs> When's your dad arriving? Mm, tomorrow morning. He's just gonna use my place to freshen up, though. She's coming in for a day of convention and inspection. For what? Well, the convention is for his restaurant. The inspection is for my apartment. There's a bit of the army sergeant in Daddy. That's why you've been dusting and polishing for days. <laughs> yeah, that does keep me on my toes. Anyway, he's going back tomorrow night on the 10-15. Whatever. I really enjoy his company, honey. He's terrific. If he wanted to hang around for the 10-18, it would be great. <laughs> Excuse me, aren't you Donald Hollinger? Yes, yes, I am. How are things at Newsview? Uh, fine. Uh, uh, fine, fine. Uh, thank you. Uh, how are things uh, down at um, uh, your office? Oh, going along nicely, thank you. Good, good. I don't think I've seen you in here before. Do you eat here often? No, I've uh, never been to Nino's before. But I know you eat here a lot. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I'd like you to meet... Oh, you don't have to tell me. She is that very talented young actress from Brewster who lives at East 87th Street near Madison and has a pretty good appetite. I know all about that girl. <laughs> I believe your father still runs a restaurant in Brewster. Yes. You'll have to excuse me. I'm very bad with names. I'm sure we've met. But... We haven't met, but I've been planning to contact you. I'm Bob Harrison, and I'd appreciate it if you uh, call me in the morning. Here's my card. Well, it's been nice seeing you, and enjoy your dinner. Nice to have seen you. Who is he? Who's Bob Harrison? I have no idea. Robert Henry Harrison, World Publications Incorporated. Ah! Uh... What's wrong? And I asked him how things were down at the office. That was nice. What's the matter with that? He owns the office and the building and the block. He does? He's the head of a publishing empire. He owns magazines, TV stations, newspapers, baseball teams. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Donald, he knew all about you. I'll bet he's going to offer you some terrific job. Well... Why don't we wait and see? But he's obviously done a lot of research on you. And he's probably found out that you're the brightest young journalist in New York City. You're so smart and clever. Whatever you do, you're better at it than anybody else, and I'm being robbed. What? Donald, look. Th there's a light under that door. I didn't leave any light on when we left. Funny, it's probably your father. Shh, he's not my father. He's not coming until tomorrow morning. <coughs> Stand back. What are you what are you gonna do? I'm gonna see if the door's locked. I'll just mm. shh. I'm going into shock. I thought you were a burglar. Yeah, but, uh, but I knew it was you. Is that some kind of a hippie greeting? No, no, no. You might have killed me. Oh, Daddy, you should have called if you were coming in tonight. Really? Why? 
Well, I, listen, I better go now. I, I got a big day tomorrow. Oh, who are you attacking? Oh, Daddy, where do you hear about Robert Henry Harrison? Who's Robert Henry Harrison? Well, he's only the owner of World Publications, and he's going to see Donald tomorrow in his office. Yeah, I, I better go now and get a good night's rest. Good night, Mr. Murray. Good night, Hollinger. Oh, Donald, let me know the first thing you hear anything from Mr. Harrison. I will. I bet you a dollar he offers you a new job. All right, but if you're going to make a bet, make it a good one. How about three thousand dollars? I don't have three thousand dollars. Neither do I. Okay, let's make it for five thousand. <laughs> Good night, sweetheart, and don't worry. About the job? About the apartment. It's very neat. <laughs> Good night. Very bright fellow, my Donald. Right. You could certainly learn a lot from me about how to kiss a girl goodnight. <laughs> yes? Oh, fine. I'll speak to him. Hello. Uh, Mr. Harrison, uh, this is Don Hollinger. Well, it's good to hear from you. Don, I'll get right to the point. I've got a proposition I'd like to discuss with you. There's an opening here in our organization, and we think that you might just fill the bill. Oh, uh, well, that, that sounds very interesting, Mr. Harrison. Uh, I'd like to hear more about it. Well, good. Let's have lunch today at Nino's. Well, it uh, sounds fine. Uh, one o'clock? Fine. I'll see you there. Uh, right. Uh, I'll see you then. And thanks for calling, Mr. Harrison. He didn't call me. I called him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all right. Hi, honey. No, he just hung up. Well, he didn't say anything. We're going to have lunch together. Yeah. Yeah, okay, sweetheart. Listen, I'll stop by afterwards if there's time. Huh? Well, I, I don't know, sweetheart. What's the difference? No, no, nothing special. Look, you'll see when I stop by, honey, okay? It's... <clears throat> it's the, uh, herringbone. Oh, with the... oh, a red shirt. Yeah, and a, and a pair of black slacks. And the, and the tie you gave me. Yes, that's... honey, the, with the orange stripe, that's... A, a blue handkerchief. Yeah, okay. All right, sweetheart, yeah. Bye-bye. Did she approve of your outfit for the day? <laughs> uh, she did. What's up? How about lunch? Oh, I, I'm sorry, uh, Jerry. I, I can't. I, uh, I have an appointment. Who with? Well, I, uh, <clears throat> I, I can't. Uh... Ah, secret luncheon. And you can't tell your best friend who'll find out about it anyway when your best girl tells her best friend, who happens to be my wife, who'll tell me, and I tell you, because you're my best friend. Shut the door. <laughs> Honest. Well, they wouldn't just offer him the same job over there that he has at Newsview. Unless, of course, it was for more money. Well, you mean it might be a promotion? Yeah, I, I was thinking like an associate editor. Oh, Anne, that would be marvelous. Jerry's always talking about becoming an associate editor at Newsview and all the things he could do with the extra money. Well, the little things he would buy, jewelry, furs. Oh, how sweet. Yeah, Jerry's always wanted a ring and a raccoon coat. <laughs> uh, well, I certainly hope it is a great offer for Donald. I mean, not that he isn't happy where he is now, he is, but it, he just would be so good for his ego to get an offer from another company, you know? Is it one yet? I admire that, Hollinger. Loyalty is a marvelous trait. Well, in all honesty, I can't say I've been unhappy at Newsview. I've enjoyed working there, and I think they've been pleased with me. Well, I'm sure they have been, just as I'm sure we will be. Don, I have an offer for you that I think will be pretty hard to turn down. The only question is, associate editor of which magazine? Well, how many magazines do they have at World Publications? Oh, well, they got a sports magazine and a fashion magazine and a theater magazine. Oh, Ruthie, would that be exciting? The theater magazine? Oh. oh, we get to see everything. You get tickets to all the shows. <gasps> oh, let me get that. Oh, hi, Daddy. Hello, sweetheart. Hi, Mr. Murray. How's the convention going? Fine. They're out having lunch. You want a bite? No, thanks. I will have some coffee. Okay. I just thought I'd come back here and pack so I can relax with you tonight after the convention ends. 
Hear anything from Hollinger? No, not yet. He's having lunch with Mr. Harrison. He's going to come by at this time. I wonder what the job is, if it is a job offer. Yeah, we were just guessing ourselves. So that's it in a nutshell, Don. A lot more money than you're making now. First, I'm sure it's going to be for more money. And we want to make you an associate editor within a year. Second, I'm willing to bet it's for an associate editorship on one of their magazines. And finally, and I know all the reservations you'll have about this part, but I want you to think it over thoroughly before you decide. And I'm sure he's going to be in charge of their theater magazine. For the next 18 months, we want you to be chief of our overseas correspondence bureau, based in Paris. <laughs> Won't that be terrific? <laughs> Daddy, he's not going to have time to stop by. So he'll stop by after work. Now, let's see. Pajamas, toothbrush, jelly. Jelly? Yeah, your mother thought you were sending me to camp. Pack my favorite jelly. You want it? Uh, no, thank you, Daddy. You keep it as part of your permanent traveling ensemble. <laughs> oh, that's Donald. <gasps> Donald! What happened? Tell me everything. Well, honey, What's it for I... more money? Well, honey, he... Wait a minute. No, no. Don't, don't tell me that. Tell me from the very second you walked into his office. Did he stand up for you when you came in? Anne, have you seen my razor? No, I haven't, Daddy. What, Donald? It's not in the bathroom. It's not in my suitcase. Where else could it be? Well, why don't you look by the bed? Good idea. Uh, sweetheart, look, I don't have time for all the details now. I have to get back to the office. I, I knew you were curious, so I just thought I'd drop by and tell you generally what he said. Right. Just give me the generally. Well, honey, he offered me... Hollinger, do you like currant jelly? <laughs> what? Current jelly, homemade. Mrs. Marie made it. Well, if she made it, uh, I'll take it, sir. Thank you very much. It's delicious. She makes it a very special way. Uh, Daddy, she... please. Donald's in a hurry. You're right. I forgot. Yeah. Go ahead, Hollinger. Well, what did he offer you? Honey, look, why don't I explain it all tonight when we have time and we can relax? Well, just tell me the important parts. Well, uh, he offered me an associate editorship. <gasps> oh, Donald! Oh, that's fantastic! Daddy! That's wonderful, but I'm not going to hug him. Well, that means a raise, doesn't it? Yeah, right, honey. Oh, Donald, that's terrific. What else? Anything else? Look, I I'll tell you the rest tonight. Well, are you going to take the job? Well, honey, to tell you the truth, I haven't even given it any thought. I just rushed right over here. Yeah, you're right. Go on, go on. Well, just tell me the rest. I mean, just generally, you know, just passingly. Oh, honey, look, I, I really don't want to start because, as I said, I haven't given it any thought. Well, just one word. I mean, the key word. To just, and then I can think about it. And then when you come back tonight, we'll, we'll both have a head thought on it. Damn. Oh, Donald, please tell me. All right, honey. It would involve moving to Paris. France? Yes, honey, right, oh, but... Oh, Donald, what kind of a thing is that to tell me when you're running out the door? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, go, you're right. Go, go on. Go on. We'll, we'll, t we'll talk later tonight. Yeah, I'll, I'll see you about six. How do you like that? Sweetheart, he said he didn't want to tell you until tonight. Yeah, well, I can certainly see why. Now, Anne... Oh, you're right, Daddy. What's the matter with me? I told him to tell me what the man said, and he told me what the man said. He didn't tell me what he said. He told me what the man said. I'm sure he must have said something to the man, and tonight I'll ask him what he said, and he'll tell me what he said to the man, and then we'll see what he says to me about what he said to the man. It's that simple. Oh, what a day. You're having meetings about other jobs, and I'm covering a doggy fashion show at the garden. What happened at the meeting? You did get a job offer, right? Uh, right. That's all you're gonna tell me? Is it a move upstairs? Further than that, it's a move across the ocean. <laughs> London? Paris. Paris? You're gonna go to Paris? What kind of a question is that? Of course you're gonna go to Paris. <laughs> you bachelors have all the luck. Don, you're gonna love Paris. Just wait till you see all those pretty mamzelles. <laughs> what? The mamzelles. Ah, yes. I remember it well. I didn't know you'd been to Paris. Of course I was, in the war. The war? You were too young for the war. Ruthie and I were there on a honeymoon. That was some war. <laughs> she caught you looking at those mademoiselles. You guessed it. I gotta go. You coming over? Later. I gotta finish this article and get it upstairs. Oh, and I gotta call Ann and tell her I'll be late. Thanks for reminding me. I better call Ruth and tell her I'm on my way. I'll see you later. Uh, ho, ho, you crazy kid. <laughs> well, wait a minute. You mean Donald actually told Jerry he's definitely going to Paris? Well, that's the feeling I got from Jerry. 
Sure. 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 Sure, right? I'm not sure. Why? Well, I mean, just four hours ago, Donald was standing right here, and, and he didn't know. I mean, he hadn't given it a single thought. Now, three hours later, he's given it a lot of thought. Well, thank you for the information, Ruthie. How are you? Um, wait till Don comes over. Jerry talks sometimes. Yeah, you're right. What's the matter with me jumping to conclusions? I should be ashamed of myself. Don't be silly. It's a reasonable conclusion. <laughs> I didn't mean it the way it sounded. Yes. Ruth, I'm home. And, by the way, Pierre will be late. Pierre? Monsieur Hollinger, didn't he call? Yes, he called and said he'd be late. Just before you called Ruthie, as a matter of fact, and said everything else. Then he told you he's going to Paris? No, he said nothing of the sort. Well, why would he hide a thing like that? I mean, uh... It was terrific, Elaine. A great meeting. And I'm gonna take you with me. Listen, do me a favor. I'm late enough. Call Anne and tell her I'm on my way. Night. Hello. Oh, hi, hi, Elaine. Don's on his way home. And better open up the champagne. He's no longer a feature writer. He's an associate editor. Uh, are you sure? Did he tell you that? Well, not only did he tell me, but you can congratulate me, too. I'm the secretary of an associate editor. He's taking me with him. <laughs> Bye. B Bye. Hello. Hi, Daddy. What's the matter, sweetheart? Oh, nothing. The Donald's secretary just called. You know, the cute, sweet, charming Elaine. What'd she say? He took the job. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> Look, honey, despite what his secretary said, I still can't believe he'd leave you. I know a little something about men, and this one's in love with you. Besides, what man could ever leave you? You're prejudiced. Well, maybe a little. But it's plain for any person to see what a charming, intelligent, lovable girl you are. <laughs> you left out talented. That's my girl. Now, don't you worry, honey. He isn't going anywhere. Maybe you're right. I mean, Donald just wouldn't decide to pick up and, and take off to Paris with, without even talking to me. I mean, a man just wouldn't. Would he? Of course not. I mean, it's not like we're talking about Albany. We're talking about Paris. I mean, it'd be different if I just didn't even <laughs> matter to him. Anne, what are you doing? It keeps me from crying. Doesn't it also keep you from breathing? Daddy. Don't make me laugh. At least you can wait to hear what Don has to say. Yeah, that should be some conversation. Well, if he is going to Paris, then he's certainly going to see it doesn't matter to me. I mean, I certainly don't want to stand in, in between Donald and his career. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm just tickle pink for him. And when he comes over, I'm, I'm going to be very brave and, and smile. And... <laughs> oh, Daddy, what am I going to do without him? It's times like this when I wish my little girl had never grown up. Well, she did. When you were little, I used to be able to make you laugh. Remember? I tell you, your face would crack if you smiled. Yeah, I remember. Too old for that now. Are you sure? I think I see a crack starting. <laughs> oh, Daddy, you're terrific. I used to have another good one, too. Now, what was it? You used to tell me, don't think about polar bears. Don't think about polar bears. Yeah. After an hour or so, you used to come to me and say, I can't think of anything but polar bears. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'd say, OK, you can think about polar bears, but for goodness sakes, don't think about bananas. <laughs> and the whole thing would start all over again. <laughs> oh, Daddy. There's Donald. Don't worry, I'm not leaving. My train doesn't go until 10.15. Okay, but don't tell him I've been crying. You just dry your eyes, I'll get the door. Hi, Miss Murray. Hollinger. Uh, where's Ann? She's in her room. Ann, Hollinger's here. Oh. Oh, hello, Donald. How nice of you to drop by. <laughs> For a minute, I thought there was another Donald in the room. Oh. 
Uh, you two clean very well. Do you have Thursdays free? <laughs> I did say I was coming by, didn't I? You're mad because I'm late. Donald, I am not mad. Well, didn't Elaine call? Yes, Elaine called. So why are you mad? She's not mad. She's mad. <laughs> Honey, I know that trick with your fingers on your nose. You're crying. Uh, she has hay fever. Always had, since she was a child. Uh, hay fever. Hay fever. Uh, and dust. Uh, makes her eyes red. You should never dust, dear. <laughs> Sit down, sweetheart. Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll go back outside again and come back in and I'll say, Hi, Ann, honey. Hi, Mr. Marie. How are you? And you say, Quick, tell us what happened to you today. Quick, tell us what happened to you today. It was just terrific. I'm going to be an associate editor. Uh, I just knew you had it in you, Donald. And they're going to give me a raise. <laughs> Wonderful, but aren't you leaving something out? I don't think so. <laughs> honey. Honey, why are you crying? I always cry at promotions. She's crying because you're going to Paris. She's afraid you'll get sick from the water. Daddy! Now, let me tell you something, Hollinger. Don't get the idea that Anne is going to sit here pining away or writing letters. There are plenty of other fish in the sea. I'm not going to Paris. That has nothing to do with it. You're not going to Paris? No. There. What did I tell you? He wouldn't go to Paris. But Donald, Jerry said... Jerry! And, and then you said your secretary called... Well, honey, 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 listen to me. After I left the meeting with Harrison, I went back to the office to finish an article and take it up to the boss. It turns out that News View knew all about Harrison's offer and they made me a better one. A, a better one? Yeah, they want me to be an associate editor in a few months instead of a year with an immediate raise in salary, as much as Harrison offered. Oh, Donald! Donald, that's terrific. I'm so proud of you. Oh, I was being so silly. I, I, I thought for sure it was all set with world publications. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got to go look for my razor. <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of nice. All the men in my life are nice. Both of them. Well, well, tell me what your boss said. I mean, what'd he say? He said he couldn't manage without me. Me either. No, no, he couldn't manage without you. <laughs> no. I'm the only one that couldn't manage without you. Even in Paris? Especially in Paris. Honey, you know how I can't order in those French restaurants. Oh, Donald. <laughs> oh, no. You want me to hold your nose? All of me. <laughs> <clears throat> Goodbye. I think if I rush, I can make the 8.15. <laughs> Bye, Daddy. Okay, here we go. Uh, a book. Four words. Valley of the Dolls! Donald? Wrong? Right, but I had all the actions worked out for all the words. Uh, I'm sorry, honey. You go ahead. Do it again. First word. Oh, never mind. You already know what it is. You you go. You go. Okay. All right. Well, wait a minute. What? Aren't you going to write it down on a piece of paper? Why? Well, suppose I get it right. I mean, you could just say no and change it, make it a different one. Man, you don't trust me? A man who loves you? Who wouldn't go to Paris without you? Who needs you to read French menus? <laughs> this is different. This is a game. Anne. Oh, never mind. I'm just kidding. Go on. A movie. One word. Cleopatra. Uh, wrong. What is it? Quick, quick, what, what is it? Uh, uh, how to succeed in business without really trying. That's one word? How to succeed in business without trying. Oh, one word. Anything. <laughs>